Hey there! If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. I'll say that again. It's free. There are creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast, oh, yep, with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to Anchor FM to get started. Now it's time for the Big Bad Broadcast. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time now to welcome you to Bitchin' Baby Boomers. Hey, welcome to the Bitchin' Baby Boomers video podcast. And our cast is ready and locked and loaded to go. And let's meet Mr. Mike Grief. Yeah. (laughs) And there is John Ferentino. Hey. (laughs) All right. He can read your mind, Joe Silky. Hi, guys. Folks. Ooh, our guy who has way too much time on his hands, Mike Mayon, ladies and gentlemen. (laughs) (laughs) And boy, do we have an extra special show for you this week with a terrific guest. And let's not waste any time. Let's go outside the boomer box with John Ferentino. All right, John, take it away. Well, hey, we got a special guest today who I'm so excited about. He's a dear friend of mine and Joe's, and I think even Mike Bayonne knows him. And uh, Mike and I go way back. Um, You can see in this picture, this is first recorded history. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, for any of you that live under a rock and haven't seen the Carbonero effect, we're going to give you a quick shot right now before we bring him on. Uh, okay. I have some metal, uh, beetles if you want. They're, they're good for that one. If I have a metal one, look. Do I have a metal one? Yeah, one metal one. <laughs> what is that? Oh, the, oh, the, the builder, uh, beetles. Some of them move metal around, some of them move wood around. You really? Heard these before. Yeah. What do they do? Yeah, they're from Alaska, <laughs> and they're used to building structures underground. Uh-huh. So they have a taste for metal and some for wood. Here, I'll show you. Like, uh, here. Oil workers in Alaska discovered these. They work nocturnally. Yeah, that's a wood one. That's wood. He went right for the wood. This guy here. You see him? He's non, but he's a he's a metal guy. Okay. Yeah, so he won't like the wood. So I'll cover these guys up. I'll put them right here. And uh, the metal guy, he'll work in the dark, too. So if you're doing a faucet, you know, it's screwed on here. <laughs> so if I put the little metal guy next to it, there he goes. Now imagine that nut's trapped behind the wall and you can't reach it. You can actually hear him go. Do you hear him? <laughs> they go very quickly when it's dark. Are you serious? Yeah. And then when you don't hear the sound anymore, you see he undoes it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's good for, for something you can't reach. You can, instead of getting a long tool, you could just put him up in the wall and he'll do that. And these guys, they take a little bit longer. They learn from the, the blueprint. They'll, we let them like sit on it and they're supposed to get to know what it is. And they're used to walking on sticks. So they learn to build their homes by the way they turn and move their antenna. So, I don't know if they had enough time to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So so with that, it gives me great pleasure to bring on the good friend, Michael Carbonero. (laughs) Hi. All right. (laughs) Oh, man. Jason, it's great to be here. (laughs) (laughs) So, Michael, um, when we went out to do the... um, 
that TV show where I told you you were bigger than him. Um, and I just went blank. Uh, <laughs> Conan O'Brien. Conan O'Brien. He told oh, you that you were the king of bullshit. Yeah. And I think you really are. And I think that's, <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a gift. It's I, definitely, it's a gift. Thank you. So, I, said I was happy to be here. And I, <laughs> and I promised you that this would be like no interview you've ever done. Okay. So I'm going to start off with a couple of questions. <clears throat> what is the square root of 16,757? Uh, ah. 16, 16.8. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can answer these questions truthfully, or you can answer them the Michael Carbonero effect way. Okay, okay. So I've, I've taken the liberty of asking five questions that they asked Miss America. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> what quality... I didn't, even, I didn't even make it to the second round when I was. <laughs> <laughs> what quality do you like most about yourself and why? I would have to say it's my nose. And <laughs> I think it has an inviting angle from the side. <laughs> That's cool. And it helps people... Bring peace to the world. Right. <laughs> and, I'm and, sorry, I'm answering these like Miss America. And, <laughs> and my grief thinks it's an inviting thing to punch. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? No. In prison, Actually, you would have made it to the final round. Yeah. <laughs> All right. What is the biggest challenge to young people today? <laughs> Living in reality and not stuck in the screen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> right. right. What is one of the feet? What is one of your features you would change your, on yourself? I, I would change. My, I wish I had more fingers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I think that we're all we feel like we need to be like everyone else and just have ten fingers. And I really would like to have twenty. I could accomplish you know double the amount of things. <laughs> wow, you are a deep thinker. That's good. <laughs> Uh, this one just comes out of nowhere, and this is actual questions. Do you think professional athletes make too much money? <laughs> you know, did they ask that to, to Miss America? Yeah, yeah, it's oh, gosh, I don't know. Uh, I, probably, yeah, no. It's so hard to get in there. I guess you deserve to win it if you get that high up, and you're professional. Sure, I don't know how much they how much do they make. I think bowlers could use a raise. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Michael, Michael, I have a question. Okay. What are your true feelings, be honest now, about John Farentino? Wait, don't, wait, 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 wait. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. Am I still allowed to lie? Yes. <laughs> oh, my God. What? No, really, John and I, I have known each other since. I first, I think I first did perform at Tannen's Magic Camp. You came in right. as a performer. Um, right. You were, were you a camper? I was a magic camper, yeah, in Long Island. It was around the corner from my house where I, oh, where I grew up in Oakdale. They had it at the LaSalle Military Academy, That's cool. which was really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, John, you came in and performed, and then I knew you through the guys at the Hicksville Magic Shop. Right. And I started – we started just doing well, – I ended up – I was like little David Copperfield doing illusions, and we did a couple shows together, and you – started like giving me advice and just took me under your wing or under your the flap of your double breasted jacket and <laughs> how about you really kind, what, you really what kind about of me and my family you know my mom and dad always came around with me because you know I, I could I couldn't drive I was just little you had just turned 60 I think I was 10 <laughs> um, <laughs> and you know John I, um <clears throat> we all admired John because of the and the the kindness behind your joking, which I'm still just a huge fan of. I love, there's like a joyful way to be dark. Like he could be dark and he could be funny and never mean spirited. Like there's a joy behind it. So we just gravitated. Is, is John other. Ferentino? Yeah, I oh, sure. this John. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen that side of him. Uh, I'm, I'm so sorry. So. I thought we were talking about John Guzmamo. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> John Ferentino, uh, yeah, he was, um, 
He he brought me. I, I went to a bunch of his shows because he needed people. They would they were bringer shows. You ever hear of those? Bringers, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I had to fill seats. How about, and how, he didn't have how, any friends his old his own age, and I wasn't old enough to get in the club, so I used to have to wear a beard and <laughs> pretend that I was old enough and fill the seats. I brought a couple dummies with me. How about the time we? How about we did time we did that show and you left the illusion on stage? Oh my god, <laughs> that was the best joke in the world. I, I wish I had a picture of that trick. It, it's that. It's the zigzag lady, but it's a different version of it. It was a really cool version. But, you know, it's just this big, tall, gray wow. cabinet. And I left it on stage after my set, and I left. And then John had to come out and do his, had to come out and do his set. And he's doing his set in the middle of it. My mom just walks on stage behind John and starts wheeling away the illusion. And, and it just looks like she's carrying this giant booth away. And John's like... Uh, she's got to make a phone call because it looked like a phone booth. <laughs> it just landed. It nailed it. I'm not doing it justice, but it was so funny. It was. Like, <laughs> phone call. All right. Well, back to the. Booth? We have. We Boomers? have. We have Boomers. two more. Yeah, we have two more Miss America questions. <laughs> what is your definition of success? Getting paid to do something you enjoy. Yeah. Nice. And if you could change one thing about the world, what would it be? Oh, I would like us to listen to each other more. Wow. What you say? I didn't hear you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then this is the last question. At what, age in, at what age in your life do you decide you wanted to be me? <laughs> I haven't gotten there yet. I... <laughs> <laughs> all right so wait just a couple more quick questions just to get serious here for a second yeah, yeah. how many uh shows have you done on the carbonero effect oh my gosh oh, right it's like 115 100 over 100 there was a few specials so it's hard to count which ones were episodes but over 100 five seasons wow. over 100 episodes <laughs> crazy really and crazy on an average, this is a question everyone asks. On an average show, yeah. like when you show the Beatle guy, right, yeah, yeah. or the Crab Woman, <laughs> crab yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, how many takes is it usually to you find the right person? Is it twenty? Is it three? Is it two? Uh, well, so, you know, I usually get four shots at it. So you know, some you know, we're always going for like the best reaction. So. Um, Yet I have four times, and then we got to move on because it's just like working so quickly. So some some of the tricks at the end of the show, the bigger effects, like the the main finale, we can. We'll, that's the only thing we'll do that day. So right. on a shoot day, if it's the big finale, that's the only trick. So we'll, we can get up to like ten people, even if we want. Um, but it usually takes about, it, it, and you never know. Sometimes that crab trick that was right. the. Actually, that, that crab trick wasn't supposed to be a finale. That was like part of another day of like four different tricks at the science lab. And she came in. We did that trick, and that was the only take we ever did of that trick because that was like. And if anybody scary. wants to, you got to go to YouTube and look up Krabby. It is one of the funniest. <laughs> is that what it's called? Krabby? Yeah, yeah. Krabby. That's what you Krabby call it. transformation, I think. Carbonaro. I just saw Krabby. If you just uh, look up Krabby on YouTube, it'll come no, up. No, Michael Carbonaro. Oh. Yeah, okay. Krabby. Yeah, that and then oh. powder. Uh, the ads for the powder, but it's a different thing. Yeah. <laughs> get rid of the crabbies. <laughs> well, hey, that was great. Like, we want you to hang around and have some fun with us. And yeah. Make fun of these other and, but thank you so much for doing the show. It's great to have you here. Yeah. Oh, this is great. You thank gotta, you. You've got to respect oh, your elders. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. <laughs> I want to show that other clip, John. Fair. Okay. Fair. About the spring fair. Sorry, I have so many books here. I'm like so overloaded with which ones are fiction and which ones are non-fiction. Sure, sure, sure. Because they're not all labeled. Like this one book that I have down here. Uh huh. This is like how to fix things. That would be non-fiction, right? <laughs> would this be non-fiction? Because it's fix it. <laughs> so how to, right? Is non-fiction. Is that right? I think. You think? Okay. Then I'm gonna put that one in non-fiction. Okay. Non-fiction. You're making the funniest face at me. You are you are really, really uh, throwing me off. Why is that? You look very familiar to me. You, like like your friend Dave? Yes. Who is this Dave person? He's just a friend of mine. A friend of yours? So do you have information on the affair? On the affair? Um, let me see if I have. 
they just got this. Romeo and Juliet is obviously non-fiction, right? This would be a non-fiction. <laughs> so look, is that Shakespeare? Even though it can... Oh, my God. Huh? Oh, nice to meet you. Oh, my God. Who am I? Who is Dave? I can't believe this. Am I somebody you I know? I you all the time. You do? I, my name's not Dave. It's David. Is it's it? Something. Something. David? What is your last name? What, what do you watch? You watch my show? Oh. <laughs> come here, come here, come here, come here. I'm going to show you something that, and you'll know what show it is. I know what show it is. It's the Mantra show. What's it called? Oh, my God. It's Dave. The Dave Chappelle, Chappelle. Chappelle. Show. show. Magic Show. The Dave Chappelle Magic Show. That's me. <laughs> that is me. In your hometown. Right here in your hometown. So cool. Right? How many people can say I have had the Dave Chappelle Magic Show in my local library? I'm having a hot flash. I'm having a hot this flash. Is so <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's oh. great. Great. Oh, Dave man. Chappelle, we have two in one guests. Uh, uh, just people, like people, I'll get people to come up to me when they recognize me. And sometimes people will be like, I know who you are. And I'm like, hi. They're like, you're Dave Chappelle. <laughs> from that clip. That was so cool. All that right. Was so thank you, John and Michael. That was terrific. And Michael, thank you for agreeing to stay with us as we go through this insanity of a show. And uh, if you... <laughs> you can't go. But feel free to put your two cents worth in and set the boomers straight on things. Okay. Because now it's time for Peter Bale's History Tales. <laughs> All right, we're back for Peter Bale's History Tales. And Michael Carbonero, we're covering the year of your birth. That's right, 1957. <laughs> 19, you, look, to us, you were so wonderfully young, and you were born in a great year, the bicentennial of our country, 200 years old, 1976. I know you remember uh, very well. You were a cesarean, I understand. You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Our he came out as bicentennial out. the year I was born. <laughs> he came out and cut his own cord. <laughs> Only a magician would do and that. Then he, it. <laughs> he, he was a first one. He did the rope trick with his umbilical cord. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so Gerald Ford was defeated by Jimmy Carter from Georgia with the piano smile, the teeth, piano teeth, and it was our bicentennial and. Michael, they issued your year of birth a $2 bill. Do you ever remember? Yes, and we are older. We used to use a $2 bill. Have you ever used a $2 bill just buying something? No, not just buying something, no. And I didn't know that. That's pretty cool. The that is pretty cool. Two, um, but now I know where they get that expression, queer is a $2 bill. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that. All right. But a lot of terrific things happened in 1976. They had a contest for who could drink the most beers in one sitting. This is a question for all of you. Who is this guy who set the record? Mike Lee. Of, yeah, it was 100, not Mike Reef. <laughs> it was 119 beers in one sitting. The record holder, you will recognize him. Here he is. Oh, really? Oh, Andre the Giant. Wow. Andre the Giant. Andre the Giant, 119 beers in one sitting. How long is that sitting? That's true. Wow. Absolutely, it and it didn't even hurt. It didn't even hurt his stylish physique. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. Also, a terrific thing happened at the Olympics, which in 1976 were in Montreal. Uh, the first perfect ten in women's gymnastics by this wonderful person. Do you do you recognize her? Not any. Who said it? Who said it? We all said it. Nadia. Come in each. 
Little story about that. I was performing in Connecticut, my stand-up act, and into the club right down front sits Meatloaf, the singer. And I said, <laughs> no, we, didn't think the, we didn't think the meal. Meatloaf the gymnast. Meatloaf the singer. And I just stupid, I stupidly said to him and the whole audience, <clears throat> a dumb joke, I said, you ever wonder what would happen if the gymnast, Nadia Kamenich, got married to Meatloaf? She'd be known as Nadia Kamenich Meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I do that joke, and I swear to you, he hadn't heard it. He roared in laughter, almost knocked over his chair. He thought it was the funniest thing he ever heard. He even gave me his phone number to call him and hang out, but I was too scared to do that. <laughs> I, that was so much fun. Nadia Komenich, 1976. And also, Mike Grief's idol. Charles Manson? Uh, close. You're very close. <laughs> Who is, uh, the son this of Sam. The son of Sam. David Berkowitz. David Berkowitz. This is David Berkowitz, the 44 caliber killer was doing his thing. Now, Michael, we're all Long Islanders on this show, native Long Islanders. Me too. Yeah. Yes, I know. And I remember, I'm old enough, that I actually told a date, you know, that we're not going to park. We're going to go right straight where we're going and not park. And she but said, I, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> but I actually rem remember his reign of terror, of course. Yeah. The dog. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was something. It was in Brooklyn, really. Oh, he was he, and, and he, he would shoot yeah, people Queens parking. Street. Is that what? Yeah, he shot along, couples. Along the, um, I guess it's the Belt Parkway where yeah. people were throwing. Yeah, but he was hitting Jericho Turnpike and Twenty Five. It was it was. Oh something. really? I didn't know he met on Long Island. Yes, no, he did. He actually hit something he, in his Nassau. Dog was telling him to kill people. Michael That's says, right. Get me a sandwich. His dog, right? It was yeah. his dog. Get his dog. All right. But the dog I, got away. <laughs> yeah. 19, 1976, a new company formed. I don't know if it went anywhere, called Apple. They were created <laughs> wow. in 1976. And now, now this, Michael, this is history for you. But, this, but John, you might remember this. Uh, a band, a new band called The Damned, and they had a big hit called New Rose. And there they are. But it, the, I bring them up in 1976 because it was the first time anybody heard of a certain kind of music. Punk? punk. Yes! Yes! Punk. That was the first punk rock in 1976. By 76, the hard rockers were a little bit in decline. Because you know who was super popular? I'm sorry, in 1976? ABBA. Oh, yeah. And this incredible group, so hip... So powerful. Stay the name. Captain and <laughs> The Captain and Looks like Kevin Costner. <laughs> A little bit. It does look like Kevin Costner. Wait, where did the damn come from? Were, were they British? Or, or? The, yes, yes. Oh, okay. Because you know punk actually started yeah, yeah. in Britain. Absolutely right. Very good. See? You know your history. All right. <laughs> Get a gold star. Yeah. <laughs> He's got so much time on his hands. I'm going to call your parents and tell them you did well today. <laughs> 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 Movies. 1976. Yo, Adrian. Rocky. What a movie. Still a great movie. Still a great movie. And this one about Mike Grief's family. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. Great. A terrific film. <laughs> Taxi Driver, wow. which launched the career of the incredible, you say it, Jody wonderful Foster. female actress. Meet Jody, Jody, Jody Foster. <laughs> Meet <laughs> Jody Foster. The, mm -hmm. the best political movie ever made, 1976, All the President's Men. All the President's Men. Good. What a great film. Now TV, television. Well, you forgot <laughs> this one. Oh, yes, I forgot that one. What Scary movie is that? The Jeep is out of me. That's the, the omen. omen. That's, That's very the scary. Omen. That's the what omen. Is that? The, the omen. omen. The Omen. The Omen. See that? Oh, that was that was a funny movie. I remember that. <laughs> 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 I, I saw my nephew, Damien, after that kid. Damien. 
Thank you. I forgot. I, yeah. Very scary, the omen. Thank you. Television. A new show with a character that used to yell, Dynamite! And, he, and he's currently still... Cause I Yelling watched, Dynamite. Uh, he's a stand-up comic. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker. Jimmy Walker. And remember the name of the show? Good Times. Good Times. Good Times. Good times. Uh, <laughs> Meanwhile, that's his biggest thing in his career. And when he does stand up, when people ask him questions, he goes, I don't talk about that. Well, it's like now afterwards, he sells photo photos and autographs them. So he does talk about it. <laughs> oh, yeah, for a while, he refused to talk about it. He got really pissy about it. I, I, I've worked with him. He's, he's very nice and very funny. Yeah, and he's right. got incredible stories about Freddie Prinz and all that, that whole crew. Um, now, this picture is of a famous guy named the show. Kelly Savalas. Kelly Savalas. What show? Kojak. Ah, you guys got it. Kojak. And you can see that picture in every diner in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Microphones were different back then. Look at that thing. <laughs> now, Michael, Michael, we talk a lot about how comedians stand on the shoulders of those who have gone before. So do scientists. And you talk in interviews about how you were inspired by a show. I looked it up called Candid Camera. And I thought I would get you with something that you don't, maybe you don't know. Maybe you do know it. Before Candid Camera was a television show, it started on radio in 1947, and it was known as Candid Microphone. Isn't that cool? I did. I did know that. Oh, you know, that's being cool. a huge fan of Candid Camera. I did know that it started as a radio show as Candid Microphone, which is insane. But the weirdest thing about it is the title "Candid Camera" is so good. The you know the double. Yeah. But it started as Candid Microphone, and then when they turned it to camera, it just made it a better title. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, that's I read a thing about like how on Candid Microphone, what he had noticed when he was interviewing soldiers first is that they would tense up when they saw the red light on the microphone go on. So he used to go in there to interview them, and he would say, this is what it looks like when the microphone is on. Let's shut it off right now. The red light would go off and go, let's just talk first about what the interview is going to be like. And he would talk to them, and they'd be totally loose, and he'd be re recording it then. And he found when they thought they weren't being recorded, they were a lot more candid. Right. So he still used that method in interrogation rooms. I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. Nixon used that. Oh, that's <laughs> That's living history. I love that. I absolutely love it. You know what? I have a, a few pictures. What were the toys? What were the toys that you grew up with, Michael? Because these were very, very popular starting in 1976. And check this out. What is that called? Pogo sticks. That's Did right. you have a pogo, pogo stick growing up? You probably. I still have one now. In case it's 10,010 10, Honda breaks down. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And also, what was popular? The evil, do you know the name Evil Knievel? Sure. Yeah. That's famous. There's a guy who almost jumped the Grand Canyon. He he didn't, but he parachuted Snake, the Snake, Snake River Canyon. Yeah, oh, that's what it was. Yeah, oh, thank you, the biker expert. Uh, <laughs> the, it's, like, it's, it's like CNN. He's our biker expert. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah. So they had the Evil Knievel stunt cycle. And this, which is a, a unicycle, I never mastered the unicycle. Did anybody here learn to ride a unicycle? Yeah, I, very, very day, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it either. I tried. I couldn't ride the unicycle. Well, it's interesting. The toys that you grew up with, Michael, were perfect for a person who was also an orthopedist because you could you could really break your legs <laughs> on a stunt cycle and a unicycle. And Evil Knievel, I'm sure, was an inspiration. Now. You know, it's gone forever, gone forever from 1976. Woolworths. They used to I call it Woolworths. five and ten. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Woolworths? Well, I had a Woolworths, though, when I was growing up, though. Like, Did you? Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, good. They lasted a while, but they're completely gone now. So is Howard Johnson's. Oh, completely man. I love gone. Howard Johnson's. Yes, me too. Fish. Didn't they used to have, like, I fish fry night? You ate all the fish you could eat. We did breakfast all the Sundays, the every Sunday at Howard Johnson's eat, right? in Long Island. Oh, that's great. Yep. You know, and because, because we all grew up as Long Islanders, you know it's gone now, 
but their prices were insane. Oh, crazy, crazy Eddie. Eddie. Crazy Eddie. Gone completely. But you grew up with that. We all did. Um, you know who else was born in your year of 1976? The beautiful Reese Witherspoon. I didn't know that. Yes. And Colin Farrell. Wasn't that the joke? Hey, did you hear that really cute blonde uh, got killed? Right? And they go, who? You know, the, the really cute blonde. Reese, and they go, Witherspoon? You go, no, with a knife. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh you'll be doing that. It's, everyone oh, falls for it all the John. time. <laughs> thank you, John. But listen. That's ridiculous. This, ladies and gentlemen, though. has been Peter Dale <laughs> and the year 1976. Thank you. Woo. All right. And now, I don't know how he does it, but I really don't know how he does it. It's time for Mind Magic. All right, it's now time to introduce Mr. Joe Silky. Hi there, folks. How you doing? Joe Silky here. And uh, first off, I want to thank Eunice, our new, uh, my new personal assistant, brought to me by the uh, BBB, Baby Boom, Pitching Baby Boomers Association. And uh, she takes care of all my uh, personal uh, emails and uh, fan mail that comes in. And she put it together a list of some uh, questions. Hey, some you had to hire there. somebody for that? What? <laughs> you had to hire somebody for two emails? <laughs> <laughs> More like 2,000, John. <laughs> <laughs> so, the first one comes from uh, Peace Pony. And she asked, uh, did I have to go for special training to learn all this mind stuff? And the, the answer is yes. And here is a picture of me, like my first day starting uh, <laughs> mind reading school. Is that the mystery school? That's the mystery school, yeah. <laughs> so the, so the and then uh, read your mind. <laughs> Mama Magic asked about it. Is there a headquarters? Is there a mind magic headquarters? And we try to keep it a secret, but there's the building, as you can see. Mind magic, <laughs> baby boomers. There we go. Love it. <laughs> You know, I know, I know you guys from Long Island are thinking that looks a lot like the Nassau County Medical Center, but they stole our design. They, <laughs> our, they our, found our blueprints. They handed our blueprints. <laughs> and finally, Mike Morcat watches with his five-year-old grandson, and he sent a drawing that his grandson did. And, uh, he also wrote that my grandson loves the show. We watch it every week. And uh, you happen to be my grandson's favorite. So he did a drawing of you. And he wanted me to tell you that he loved your songs and the books that you were writing. <laughs> he also said that he felt a little stabby from time to time. <laughs> he really wants to ride your motorcycle. Wait, I don't have a motorcycle. Where, 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 I don't get it. What's going on here? Wait. All right. Oh, you must that's, why he's wear, that's why he wears the bandana now. What? Yes. That's I don't, why he wears I the wear, bandana. I don't, want to be, I don't want to be mistaken for a discount Joe Silky. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I want to thank again the Eunice for putting together all my uh, my personal appearances that are going to be coming up soon. And uh, now we're going to move on to a mind magic trick. So what you're going to need is you're going to need a deck of cards. And if you once you have that deck of cards. Do you have a deck of cards, Michael? Uh, I don't know. I should, right? Don't let me stop you. I'm going to try and look for one. Oh, you, I saw my pants on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, pants. <laughs> so what you're going to do is you're going to take your deck of cards and you're going to take out a queen of hearts and two indifferent black cards. Mm. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to set the cards up. Let's see if I can get this right. So you have a queen. Queen goes on top. And the black cards go underneath. Two black cards go underneath. Okay. Okay. So now okay. what you're going to do is in a moment, I'm going to ask you to think of 
your own special secret number, okay? Between 1 and 10. Now, what you're going to do is, when I ask you for that number, you're going to count. Let's say if the number was 3, you're going to count 1, and you're going to take the top card and place it on the bottom. The queen is on top to start with. goes on the bottom. 2... Three. You're not going to turn them over like that, but you're just going to count one, two, three, okay? So, think of a number between one and ten, and once you got that, you're going to count. You're going to count the top card to the bottom card until you reach your number, okay? Mm -hmm. so go ahead, people at home, follow along. Okay, now let me see, well, let me see the cards. This is a version of, this is a mental version of three card Monty. Right. Okay, so did you, everyone do that? Yep. Yeah. Okay, now, what I want you to do is do it again, but do it this time a little faster. Count the same number of cards that you had. You're going to count them one at a time. Okay? Okay. Okay, everyone at home, okay? Yep, everyone at home, okay, okay. <laughs> so now, I'm going to give you my secret number. My secret number is two. So what I want you to do is I want you to count one, two. And, you know, let's just do it again, one, two. This way we're, we're totally mixed up. And so you don't think there's anything funny going on? What I want you to do well, is... I certainly wasn't worried about that. <laughs> yeah. well, so what I want you to do is the last time I want you to take your secret number and count those many cards one at a time, down to the bottom till you're done. Okay. All right. So now, <laughs> you go, You got it? Yeah, I'm just thinking of Michael, what he said. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> must, must be the time zone difference between L.A. and Florida. <laughs> so what I want you to do is you're going to turn over the top card, and that is not going to be the queen. That's going to be a black card. Yes, true. You turn over the next card. And two is the black card because the queen is the card you were holding. That's the money card, and everybody had different numbers and cards. I had a king because I didn't have a queen in my deck. <laughs> no, judgment, no judgments for me. <laughs> that was amazing. Thank that you. Was cool. That concludes... Mind magic for this week. See you next week. Take it away, Peter Bells. How right. did he do it? Never mind how, why. <laughs> why, why, why? Why did he, he do it? it? <laughs> well, thank you, Joe. Thank you. And now, ladies and gentlemen, there's somebody in this cast who always has something to get off his chest. And now it's time for Grief's Grief. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mike Grief. Oh, hey, what's happening? Welcome to Boomer Update with Mike Grief. Welcome, Michael Carbonero. Yeah. Right. <laughs> hey, you guys here? <laughs> <laughs> so, here's the news, man. Bernie Madoff died this week. Huh? They said, the uh, spokesman said he died of natural causes. If you consider being stomped to death by everyone in cell block C as natural causes. <laughs> You know, I'm I'm hoping his roommate Hitler is shoving fish hooks in his eyes right now, Bernie Madoff. Okay. I truly love. It. Yes. <laughs> anyway. uh, oh, by the way, uh, I just heard there was a uh, another mass shooting occurred uh, at the uh, the the uh, the offices of uh, the advertising offices when uh, Limu the emu and his partner Doug walked into the advertising agency that created that campaign and <laughs> shot the assholes who created it. <laughs> yelling, where's the wet teddy bear guy? Where's the wet teddy bear guy? We want to kill him too. So, <laughs> I just, I just hate those commercials, man. This wet, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the company, uh, Liberty Mutual, uh, said sure? that, uh, they would be freezing the, the, uh, emu because there was a murder suicide. Obviously, the emu killed Doug and, then they're going to eat him for Thanksgiving, but uh, it's not a big, 
Thank you. Not a big. Yes. Thank you. We are welcome. Thank you for that ray of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting a breaking news right here. Let, let me hold on one second. Let me mute myself right here. Okay. Yeah. No, you, you can release the Carbonero family. Yeah. No, he showed up. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? Didn't you hear the code word? I said wet teddy bear twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was talking about the commercial. You were confused. Okay, Ma, just release him, Mom. Release the family. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not going to ask him if he knows Lance Burton. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, that was stupid. Uh, the, some Russian launched a missile at, um, uh, missile at Florida or something like that. Nothing. No big... <laughs> No big whoop. So uh, <laughs> anyway, in uh, in in honor of our guest in 1976, I was oh first I want to answer a, a, an email here, a boomer question. Uh, Chris M, a longtime listener, asks. Uh, he said he's having a debate with one of his coworkers. He wants to know if Perry Mason uh, is a better lawyer than Matlock. And I said, yes, uh, yes, Chris, uh, Perry Mason is a better lawyer. You can feel free to jab a pencil in your coworker's eye now. Uh, <laughs> just a little aside, Chris, neither one of them are actually lawyers, so feel free to jab a pencil into your own eye. But, uh, <laughs> and in honor of 1976 and, and, and Michael Carbonaro and uh, being that it's so close to the holiday season, I wrote one of my poems. In, in your honor for, for the Christmas holiday season. And here it is. <clears throat> it was the night before Christmas, and there on my couch, Santa's mutilated body was strewn through my house. <laughs> his head was laying by the chimney there, and a trickle of blood ran down from his hair. <laughs> you see, I'd taken his goodies, then his wallet and gold chains, and then hacked to pieces Santa's mortal remains. <laughs> But I heard him exclaim before I turned out his lights, your Christmas present this year will be a sentence of life. <laughs> <laughs> I awoke with a start. It was only a dream. You see, Christmas for Jews isn't as easy as it seems. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, that's, Thank you. That's, that's very nice. That's my, that's my little grief for the oh. week. <laughs> Oh, Mike, that was a terrific segment. Hey, there, son of Sam back there. Is, there. Is there, I know where. <laughs> Sam, I am. That's a wonderful, a wonderful yeah. segment, Mike, especially Mike. for the young people watching out yeah. there. <laughs> well, it's about, it's about love and, you know, getting together for the holiday season. And we all should be thankful they're making great advances in psychotropic medication. <laughs> he asked. He actually asked me if he thought that would be too dark for Michael, and I said, and I said "Absolutely not." No. <laughs> well, listen, listen to everybody. This has been a super fun show, and I'll tell you, Michael Carbonaro, you're not a baby boomer because you're so wonderfully young, but you're an honorary baby boomer. <laughs> you are one of us. Thank you so much for coming on our show. Let's tell everybody watching. To check out michaelcarbonaro.com. And I understand you have some Zoom shows coming up entitled Live from Space. Sounds like a lot of fun. Super fun. Can I tell you one thing I, about this show? It's I've watched it several times, and I've watched it with several people. And it is really one of the most incredible shows you're ever going to see. He actually has taken Zoom to a legitimate uh, entertainment level. It's it's really cool. It's I mean, I can't even tell you anything about it because it would ruin the surprises, but it's it, it's really incredible. It's something you should really see. And and it, it's, you're only saying that because I'm doing something you made up in it. No, no, it's, <laughs> no it really is. Uh, it, Joe, really is. It, Joe, it really Joe is. Joe and John really helped with the Live from Space cool. as well. Uh, and we're having a blast. I did six shows only, and then I decided to do two more because people wanted to see it. And I was like, you know what? I have everything. I'm going to do it. It's been a, it's been really fun. And thank you for that, John. That's awesome. And John, yeah, it's right. great. And it really is. It's really something different. You know, like you see people, cool. magicians doing tricks on Zoom, and it's like, uh, you know, here you go, la di da, where they don't really take the whole concept of Zoom and use it to their advantage. I guess that's what I'm saying. Not trick. 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 Not trick
Grief from space, no, no good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you modeled you modeled your Zoom show after this show, right? <laughs> <laughs> but the way to find it is to go to michaelcarbonaro.com and go to Live in Space and check the show out. The dates are April 30th, right? Yes, and May 8th. And May 8th. Yep. All right. Well, you know, Michael, you're the best. Um, in order... We decided we had a meeting of the cast. In order to get you to come on the show again, we're going to have Mike. No, actually, we decided not Mike Grief. He's too scary. But we're going to have <laughs> we're going to have John Ferentino camp out on your lawn at your house <laughs> until he's not smiling. Okay, good. He's smiling now because until you agree to come on the show again. <laughs> you, hey, wait, we have a clip from, from his show. We have a clip, have a clip, clip from the oh, show. Yeah. It's that was just a goofy. I sent you like a goof. Oh. Yeah, no, it's just funny. Hi, I'm in my car. Yes, I'm wearing a space suit. And yes, I drive a 2010 Honda Civic. I'm doing two more space shows, Carbonaro, live from space, encore performances, back by popular demand. Okay, two people on Twitter. But seriously, <laughs> April 30th, May 8th, two more virtual shows. Come check it out. Go to michaelcarbonaro.com and get it. Oh. All right. <laughs> and you know, because we you gotta watch always, the show to get the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I want to see that. <laughs> you know, and Michael, I I know you acknowledge your historical influences, and that's based on a show that was done 25 years ago by John Ferentino entitled "Live from New Jersey." <laughs> and I think it's great that you've taken that concept and really run with it. <laughs> So anyway, you guys, you guys should see this show. I want to see it. I I want it. it. It's great. Absolutely. All right. Well, listen. Let's just tell our our viewers to check out the bbbradio.com. That's our website, our Facebook page, and the Bitch and Baby Boomers. You can find that easily on Facebook, and we're always streaming on YouTube. And uh, so this has been a terrific, fun show. We're going to be back next week. I want to thank our very special guest. I mean, man, you fit right in. You're very, you're great, uh, Michael Carbonaro. And I want to thank, as usual, Mr. John Ferentino and Joe Silky, big fan, and Mike Payone, <laughs> and uh, thank God he's calm right now. My <laughs> and your family will be there when you get home, Michael. <laughs> All right, bitch and baby boomers. We'll see you next week. Tune in next week to more bitch and baby boomers.